Let's talk about how a picture of health supersizes your business. Sharon Elshmere, this is from a, an event I went to years ago, uh, and I had picture frames. It, it was a long, it's a long story. Anyway, a picture of health is our idiom for supersize your business today. A picture of health uh, became popular in the late 18th century. That's when it's traced back to, and Jane Austen actually used it in her book, Emma, in 1875. So what the heck is a picture of health and what are at least seven things I want to touch on or seven ways that you can use a picture of health to supersize and grow your business. Now, uh, the first thing we want to think about is uh, our vision. A picture speaks to, to our where we're going, our vision of what we're creating and where we're going in the world. We have to have a picture in our mind. Sometimes we'll look at magazine covers, literally physical or health related magazine covers about our physical health, you know, weightlifting magazines or shape or women's health magazines and things and compare ourselves to the models on the cover. Not necessarily the best thing to do, right? Because secondly, we all have our, well, let's talk about our vision. So what's our vision and where do we get our vision? What picture are we comparing ourselves to? We want to model other people's success, but not copy it, right? As we're building and growing our business, thirdly, we'll all have our own unique journey. No two journeys to success are the same. Why? Because each and every one of us get to define what success means to us, what it is that we're trying to create in the world and the business we want to create. We get to decide what success is and what it is that we want to show up in the world with, what solutions we want to provide, the people we want to serve, everything. We get to decide everything about it. So I am asking people whenever, and, and mostly the people that work with me and, and are connected to me, automatically want to make the world a better place. But I say whenever you're doing any of the things that we talk about to supersize and grow your business, make sure that you're building something that makes the world a better place. It's easy uh, to cheat and shortcut and do things to make a lot of money or whatever you do and however you define success quickly and easily. But if you're harming other people or making the world a worse place, I say, yeah, don't do it. Just don't do it. Why? Because I believe in karma and what goes around comes around. So do what's right all the time and know that good things will come your way. Uh, sixth, there's a lot of different tools that we can use to uh, see how we're doing, to, to find out how are we doing, how healthy is our organization. We can use SWOT analysis, S-W-O-T, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats, that framework. I personally love that tool. Uh, we can do audits of different types based on what industry we're in or what business we're in or what frameworks or models we're using. There's tons of tools available. There's apps, there's online tools. Every consultant and coach imaginable has some way to analyze your business and tell you how you're doing, whether you agree with them or not. Uh, but you can do it yourself. You don't have to pay someone else to do a, an overview or a, a, a deep look at different areas and aspects of your business to see if you're going in the direction you want to go. Are you making progress toward your vision or not? And finally, seventh, uh, the thought that comes to mind with this one is benchmarking and, and comparing ourselves to others. I remember back in corporate America, and even when I first left corporate America full time and was uh, involved in different manufacturing businesses, we did a lot of benchmarking. We, but that was like officially comparing ourselves to other businesses. And benchmarking reminds me of comps in the real estate industry. And if you've ever been involved in real estate, you know exactly what I'm talking about. We take things that don't really compare and we use formulas to try to make them compare in order to ascertain a value for a, a, an individual piece of property, what a property is worth. And the thing about comps, just like benchmarking and anything else, is you can pick and choose the properties you compare something to to make the value look greater or to make the value look less depending on where you are in the transaction if I am an investor and I want to purchase a property for the least amount of money possible I'm gonna pick comps that make that property not seem as valuable if I am selling my property and I have been on both ends of this right if I'm selling a property I'm gonna find the comps that make my property look the most profitable so we have to be careful about auditor bias or our own bias when we're benchmarking or using different tools to analyze our business and and if we're on track for 
what we consider success as we're supersizing our business. So those are just a couple of thoughts on a picture of health. Number one, what's the picture you're looking at? Is it an accurate picture? Should you be modeling it? Or is it something that's been so Photoshopped, you're not even comparing what you're doing to reality? Because a lot of times we, we beat ourselves up because we come up short because we're comparing ourselves to something that just isn't comparable. It just doesn't add up. Remember that each of our journeys is unique. It's up to us to decide what success and what super size and what growing our business looks like. It's up to us to decide what kind of business we want to create for the world, always making the world a better place. And uh, use tools to help us make decisions, but don't be so hard, fast, and believing that the tools are the answer because they're not, they're just a tool, right? A hammer isn't good for everything. Just like no tool that's out there is the perfect thing for everything in every business. All right, have an awesome day. I will be with you tomorrow with another couple of physical related idioms for the month of January to coincide with the uh, BU 365 day annual challenge this year. If you're curious about that, hit me up, just send me a direct message. Otherwise, I'll be with you tomorrow.